Buckle up for safety, always buckle up. Pull your seat belt snug, give an extra tug. Buckle up for safety, buckle up. Do you know wearing seatbelts in cars wasn't enforced in the U.S. until 1968? But today, not wearing seatbelts feels like a foreign concept. 89.6% of people in the U.S. wear seatbelts every day. Unless you're on a bus. Or a school bus. So what gives? Seatbelts save lives. They saved almost 15,000 lives in 2017 alone and could have saved 2,500 more if they were used. These stats are, of course, in regards to passenger cars, which have the highest risk of death for people inside the vehicle. In contrast, public transit like city buses, intercity buses, and school buses have the lowest passenger death count, making them some of the safest ways to get around. So what is it about them that makes them so safe despite not having seatbelts? First things first, they don't let just anybody drive a bus. All bus drivers undergo rigorous training, making them far more skilled than the average driver, as shown by this training video by the MTA. Combine this with the fact that they're usually driving the same routes every day, and this means fewer surprises and a much safer ride for passengers. Passenger cars average in between roughly 3,000 to 5,000 pounds. Buses, on the other hand, average in at roughly 38,000 pounds. Size and weight matters in accidents because of the amount of stopping force a vehicle has and how that crash force interacts with passengers. When a car encounters an object, its lesser weight means that it'll stop rather quickly and eject passengers from their seats. But for a bus, it would take a significantly longer amount of time for these heavier vehicles to slow down and stop. This means that each passenger will experience less crash force overall. School buses under 10,000 pounds are closer in weight to cars, and because of that, they're required to have seatbelts. Of course, when it comes to crashing into extremely rigid objects, crashes can still be deadly because you have a lot more mass and acceleration behind you, which brings us to the topic of speed. The faster you're going, the higher the probability of death is. But city buses don't need to worry about that. While it varies per city, nationally, buses average out at a speed of just 12.7 miles per hour. Crashes at this speed, while scary, wouldn't necessarily be fatal. School buses, however, since they're transporting children, have state regulations that restrict their speeds often to be under the speed limit. Still though, depending on what state you're in, these speeds can be up to 65 miles per hour on the highway. These larger school buses usually don't have seatbelts, but the inside of the bus is designed differently to counteract that. School buses are built with a design idea known as compartmentalization. The seats in buses are higher, have more padding, and are closer together. These compartmentalized energy-absorbing seats restrain kids from being ejected, keeping them contained in the event of a head-on collision. So the seats in these buses are essentially also acting as huge seatbelts themselves. In tests run by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, or the NHTSA, there has been evidence that lap belts and three-point belts, when used improperly, can cause severe abdominal or neck injuries. And when kids have a tendency to focus more on fun than proper seatbelt etiquette, this is an important point for consideration. City buses are a whole different beast. They are not compartmentalized in order to have the highest occupancy possible. This open layout also allows people to get on and off the bus in a timely fashion, which is one of the reasons seatbelts might not make sense in these kinds of buses. So those are the reasons that we don't have seatbelts in buses right now, but do we need them? In that same study I mentioned earlier by the NHTSA about seatbelts potentially being more dangerous for necks and abs, they also said any increased risk associated with the use of lap belts in small school buses are more than offset by preventing ejections. Frontal collisions aren't the only type of accidents that happen. Buses have rolled over, for instance. None of the preventative measures mentioned so far could save you in that scenario other than a seatbelt. But how feasible would it really be to put seatbelts in every bus?
Seats with belts inherently limit the amount of passengers you can hold on any kind of bus. And purchasing more buses can get pricey. Up to $130,000 for a new school bus with seat belts. But not buying more buses forces passengers to take more dangerous forms of transportation, like civilian cars. So either way you slice it, there are difficulties. However, there are groups that are fighting to have seatbelt laws passed for larger school buses in certain states. Tests show that they are safer, but with school buses already being the safest form of ground transportation, it can be pretty tricky to get people on board for those higher costs. City buses suffer similar consequences. And that's not even factoring in all the legal ramifications of what happens when some buses have seatbelts and others don't. How can you protect some people and not all? Questions multiply, getting more complex very quickly when considering changing the status quo. And that's based off the already safest form of ground transportation. So you can see why legislators and manufacturers might be a little hesitant to change the rules this late in the game. With all that said, public transportation is still substantially safer than driving your own car or carpooling. So if you really want to be safe, skip the car and the Uber and hop on your local bus. End screen. Thank you so much for watching. Those of you who made it to the end of the video, you are my favorite people in the whole world. If you'd like to show a little love and support to keep us making more videos like this one, subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell.